You are about to embark upon the Great Crusade. Your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well-trained, well-equipped, and battle-hardened. We will accept nothing less than full victory. Good luck, and let us all beseech the blessing of Almighty God upon this great and noble undertaking. Welcome back to the Army Flashcards Ranger School Podcast. I'm your host, Zach Wiley. Today's chapter from the Ranger Handbook is Chapter 10, Machine Gun Employment. No real announcements. As always, check out armyflashcards.com for more free resources. And with that, let's begin. Chapter 10, Machine Gun Employment. Machine guns are a Ranger platoon's most effective weapons against the dismounted enemy force. Machine guns allow the ranger unit to engage enemy forces from a greater range and with greater accuracy than individual weapons. Specifications 10-1 A leader's ability to properly employ available machine guns and achieve fire superiority is often the deciding factor on the battlefield. Table 10-1 on pages 10-1 and 10-2 show references and specifications for various machine guns. Definitions associated with machine guns are found in Table 10-2 on pages 10-2 and 10-3, and Figure 10-1 on page 10-3 and Figure 10-2 on page 10-4. Table 10-1 Specifications of Machine Guns Weapon M249 Saw Information FM3-22.68 and TM9-1005-201-10 Description 5.56mm gas operated automatic. Weight 16.41 pounds for gun with barrel and 16 pounds for the tripod. Length 104 centimeters. Max range 3600 meters. Max effective range bipod point 600 meters. Bipod area 800 meters. Tripod area 1000 meters. And grazing 600 meters. Tracer burnout 900 meters. Sustained rate of fire, 50 rounds per minute, 6 to 9 rounds, 4 to 5 seconds every 10 minutes. Rapid rate of fire, 100 rounds per minute, 6 to 9 rounds, 2 to 3 seconds, 2 minutes. Cyclic rate of fire, 850 rounds per minute, continuous burst. Weapon, M240 Bravo. Information, FM3-22.68, TM9-1005-313-10. Description, 7.62mm gas operated medium, weight, 27.6 pounds, gun with barrel, and 20 pounds for the tripod, length, 110.5 centimeters, max range, 3,725 meters, max effective range, bipod point, 600 meters, tripod point, 800 meters, bipod area, 800 meters, tripod area, 1,100 meters, suppression, 1,800 meters, and grazing 600 meters. Tracer burnout 900 meters. Sustained rate of fire 100 rounds per minute, 6 to 9 rounds, 4 to 5 seconds every 10 minutes. Rapid rate of fire 200 rounds per minute, 10 to 13 rounds, 2 to 3 seconds, 2 minutes. Cyclic rate of fire 650 to 950 rounds per minute. Continuous burst. Weapon M2. Information. FM 3-22.68 TM 9-1005-213-10 Description 50 caliber recoil operated heavy Weight 128 pounds Gun with barrel and tripod Length 156 centimeters Max range 6764 meters Max effective range point 1500 meters Single shot Area 1,830 meters and grazing 700 meters. Tracer burnout 1,800 meters. Sustained rate of fire 40 rounds per minute, 6 to 9 rounds, 10 to 15 seconds, end of day or if damaged. Rapid rate of fire 40 rounds per minute, 6 to 9 rounds, 5 to 10 seconds, change barrel end of day or if damaged. Cyclic rate of fire 450 to 550 rounds per minute, continuous burst. Weapon Mark 19. Information FM 3 22.27. TM 9 1005 
1010-230-10. Description. 40mm air-cooled blowback operated automatic grenade launcher. Weight. 140.6 pounds. Gun with barrel and tripod. Length. 109.5 centimeters. Max range. 2,212 meters. Max effective range. 0.1500 meters. Area. 2,212 meters. Tracer burnout, NA, and sustained rate of fire, 40 rounds per minute. Rapid rate of fire, 60 rounds per minute. Cyclic rate of fire, 325 to 375 rounds per minute, continuous burst. Table 10-2, machine gun terms. Line of sight, the imaginary line drawn from the fire's eye through the sights to the point of aim. Burst of fire. A number of successive rounds fired with the same elevation and point of aim when the trigger is held to the rear. The number of rounds in a burst can vary depending on the type of fire employed. Trajectory. The curved path of the projectile and its flight from the muzzle of the weapon to its impact. As the range of the target increases, so does the curve of the trajectory. Maximum ordinate. The height of the highest point above the line of sight the trajectory reaches between the muzzle of the weapon and the base of the target. It always occurs at a point about two-thirds of the distance from weapon to target and increases with range. Cone of fire. The pattern formed by the different trajectories in each burst as they travel down range. Vibration of the weapon and variations in ammunition and atmospheric conditions all contribute to trajectories that make up the cone of fire. Beaten zone. The elliptical pattern formed when the rounds in the cone of fire strike the ground or target. The size and shape of the beaten zone changes as a function of the range to target and slope of the target, but is normally oval or cigar shaped, and the density of the rounds decreases toward the edges. Gunners and automatic riflemen should engage targets to take maximum effect of the beaten zone. Due to the right hand twist of the barrel, the simplest way to do this is to aim at the left base of the target. Sector of fire. An area to be covered by fire that is assigned to an individual, a weapon, or a unit. Gunners are normally assigned a primary and a secondary sector of fire. Primary sector of fire. The primary sector of fire is assigned to the gun team to cover the most likely avenue of approach from the enemy from all types of defensive positions. Secondary sector of fire. The secondary sector of fire is assigned to the gun team to cover the second most likely avenue of approach of the enemy. It is fired from the same gun position as the primary sector of fire. Final protective fire. An immediately available prearranged barrier of fire to stop enemy movement across defensive lines or areas. Final protective line. A predetermined line along which grazing fire is placed to stop an enemy assault. If a final protective line is assigned, the machine gun is sighted along it except when other targets are being engaged. An FPL, or final protective line, becomes part of the unit's machine gun FPFs, which is final protective fires. An FPL is fixed in direction and elevation. However, a small shift for search is employed to prevent the enemy from crawling under the FPL and to compensate for irregularities in the train or the sinking of the tripod legs into soft soil during firing. Fire is delivered during all conditions of visibility. Principal direction of fire. Assigned to a gunner to cover an area that has good fields of fire or that has a likely dismounted avenue of approach. A principal direction fire, or PDF, also provides mutual support to an adjacent unit. If no FPL has been assigned, then sight machine guns using the PDF. If a PDF is assigned and other targets are not being engaged, the machine guns remain on the PDF. It is used only if an FPL is not assigned. It then becomes the machine gun's part of the unit's final protective fires. Classes of Automatic Weapons Fire 10-2 The U.S. Army classifies automatic weapon fires with respect to ground, target, and weapon. Respect to ground is detailed in Table 10-3 and Figure 10-3. Table 10-3, Classes of Fire Respect to Ground Grazing Fire Grazing fire occurs when the center of the cone of fire rises less than 1 meter above the ground. Grazing fire is employed in the final protective line defense. It is possible only when the terrain is level or uniformly sloping. Any dead space encountered along the FPL is covered by indirect fire, such as from an M320. When firing over level or uniformly sloping terrain, the machine gun M240 Bravo and M249 Saw can attain a maximum of 600 meters of grazing fire. The M2 can attain a maximum of 700 meters. Plunging fire. Plunging fire occurs when the danger space is within the beaten zone. It occurs when weapons fire at long range from high to low ground into abruptly rising ground or across uneven terrain. 
resulting in a loss of grazing fire at any point along the trajectory. 10-3 Leaders and gunners should strive at all times to position their gun teams where they can best take advantage of the machine gun's beaten zone with respect to an enemy target. Channeling the enemy by using terrain or obstacles so they approach a friendly machine gun position from the front in a column formation is one example. 10-4 In this situation, the machine gun would employ enfilade fire on the enemy column and the effects of the machine gun's beaten zone would be much greater than if it engaged the same enemy column from the flank. Table 10-4 on page 10-6 defines and compares the four classifications of fire with respect to the target. Figures 10-4 alpha on page 10-7 and 10-4 bravo on page 10-8 depict these classifications. Table 10-4, classes of fire respect to target. Enfilade fire best occurs when the lawn axis of beaten zone and target coincide or nearly coincide. Can be frontal fire on column or flanking fire on line. Most desirable class of fire with respect to the target. Makes maximum use of the beaten zone. Leaders and gunners should always try to position guns for enfilade fire. Frontal fire. Column, yes. Line, no. Occurs when the lawn axis of the beaten zone is at a right angle to the front of the target. Highly desirable against a column. Becomes enfilade fire as beaten zone coincides with lawn axis of target. Less desirable against a line because most of the beaten zone normally falls below or after the enemy target. Flanking fire. Column, no. Line, yes. Delivered directly against the flank of the target. Most desirable against a line. Becomes enfilade fire as a beaten zone coincides with the lawn axis of the target. Least desirable against a column because most of the beaten zone normally falls before or after the enemy target. Oblique fire. Gunners and automatic riflemen. Occurs when lawn axis of the beaten zone is at any angle other than a right angle to the front of the target. 10-5. Fires with respect to the machine gun include fixed, traversing, searching, traversing and searching, swinging traverse, and free gun fires. Table 10-5 describes these classifications and figure 10-5 on page 10-10 depicts them. Offense 10-6 Successful offensive operations depend on effective employment of fire and movement. They are essential and depend on each other. For example, without the support of covering fires, maneuvering in the presence of enemy fire can produce huge losses. 10-7. 10-7. Covering fires, especially those that provide fire superiority, allow maneuvering in the offense. However, fire superiority alone rarely wins battles. The primary objective of the offense is to advance, occupy, and hold the enemy position. Table 10-5. Classes of fire respect to gun. Fixed. Fixed fire is delivered against a stationary point target when the depth and width of the beaten zone covers the target with little or no manipulation needed. After the initial burst, the gunners follow any change of movement of the target without command. Traversing. Traversing dispenses fires in width by successive changes in direction, but not elevation. It is delivered against a wide target with minimal depth. When engaging a wide target requiring traversing fire, the gunner should select successive aiming points throughout the target area. These aiming points should be close enough together to ensure adequate target coverage. However, they do not need to be so close that they waste ammunition by concentrating a heavy volume of fire in a small area. Searching Searching distributes fires in depth by successive changes in elevation. It is employed against a deep target or a target that has depth and minimal width, requiring changes only in the elevation of the gun. The amount of elevation change depends on the range and slope of the ground. Traversing and Searching This class of fire is a combination in which successive changes in direction and elevation result in the distribution of fires in width and depth. It is employed against a target whose lawn axis is oblique to the direction of fire. Swinging Traverse Swinging Traverse fire is employed against targets that require major changes in direction, but little or no change in elevation. Targets may be dense, wide, and close formations moving slowly toward or away from the gun, or vehicles or mounted troops moving across the front. If tripod mounted, the traversing slide lock lever is loosened, enough to permit the gunner to swing the gun laterally. When firing swing and traverse, the weapon is normally fired at the cyclic rate of fire. Swing and traverse consumes a lot of ammunition and does not have a beaten zone because each round seeks its own area of impact. Free gun. Free gun fire is delivered against moving targets that are rapidly engaged with fast changes in direction and elevation. Examples are aerial targets, vehicles, mounted troops, or enemy soldiers in relatively close formations 
moving rapidly toward or away from the gun position. When firing free gun, the weapon is normally fired at the cyclic rate of fire. Free gun fire consumes a lot of ammunition and does not have a beaten zone because each round seeks its own area of impact. Medium machine guns, 10-8. In the offensive, the PL can establish a base of fire element with the M240 Bravo, the M249 Saw light machine gun, or a combination of the weapons. When the platoon scheme and maneuver is to conduct the assault with the infantry squads, the platoon sergeant or the weapon squad leader may position this element and control its fires. The M240 Bravo machine gun is more stable and accurate at greater ranges, but takes longer to maneuver on the tripod than on the bipod. Machine gunner responsibilities include target key enemy weapons until the enemy's assault element masks the machine gun's fires, suppress the enemy's ability to return accurate fire, hamper the maneuver of the enemy's assault element, fix the enemy in position, isolate the enemy by cutting off their avenues of reinforcement, shift fire to the flank opposite the one being assaulted, and continue targeting any automatic weapons providing enemy support. Engage enemy counterattack if any. Cover the gap created between the forward element of the friendly assaulting force and terrain covered by indirect fires when the direct fires are lifted and shifted. On signal, displace with the base of fire element to join the assault element on the objective. Mark 19 and M2. 10-9. As part of the base of fire element, the Mark 19 and M2 can help the friendly assault element. They do this by suppressing enemy bunkers and lightly armored vehicles. Even if their fire is too light to destroy enemy vehicles, well aimed suppressive fire can keep the enemy buttoned up and unable to place effective fire on friendly assault elements. 10-10 The Mark 19 and M2 are particularly effective in preventing lightly armored enemy vehicles from escaping or reinforcing. Both vehicle mounted weapons can fire from a long range standoff position or be moved forward with the assault element. Base of Fire 10-11 Machine gun fire from a sport by fire position is the minimum needed to keep the enemy from returning effective fire. Ammunition is conserved so the guns do not run out of ammunition. The weapon squad leader positions and controls the fires of all machine guns in the element. 10-12 Machine gun targets include key weapons or groups of enemy targets, either on the objective or attempting to reinforce or counterattack. The nature of the terrain, desire to achieve some standoff, and the other factors of MET-TC Prompt the leader to the correct tactical positioning of the base of fire element. There are distinct phases of rates of fire employed by the base of fire element. Initial heavy volume, rapid rate, to gain fire superiority. Slower rate, or sustained rate, to conserve ammunition while still preventing effective return of fires as the assault moves forward. Increased rate as the assault nears the objective. Lift and shift to targets of opportunity. Machine guns in the support by fire role should be set in roll and assign a primary and alternate sector of fire in a primary and alternate position. Machine guns are suppressive fire weapons used to suppress known and suspected enemy positions. Therefore, gunners cannot be allowed to empty all their ammunition into one bunker simply because that is all they can identify at the time. Shift and shut down the weapon squad gun teams one at a time, not all at once. M203 and mortar or other indirect fire can be used to suppress while the machine guns are moved to where they can shoot. Leaders take into account the surface danger zone of the machine guns when planning and executing the lift and or shift of the support by fire guns. The effectiveness of the enemy on the objective plays a large role in how much risk should be taken with respect to the lifting or shifting of fires. Once the support by fire line is masked by the assault element, fires are shifted or lifted or both to prevent enemy withdrawal or reinforcement. Maneuver element 10-13. Under certain terrain conditions and for proper control, machine guns may join the maneuver or assault unit. When this is the case, they are assigned a cover fire zone or sector. The machine guns seldom accompany the maneuver element. The gun's primary mission is to provide covering fire. The machine guns are only employed with the maneuver element when the area or zone of action assigned to the assault or company is too narrow to permit proper control of the guns. The machine guns are then moved with the unit and ready to employ on order from the leader and in the direction needing the supporting fire. 10-14 When machine guns move with the element undertaking the assault, the maneuver element brings the machine guns to provide additional firepower. These weapons are fired from a bipod in an assault mode from the hip, or from the underarm position. They target enemy automatic weapons anywhere on the unit's objective. 10-15 After destroying the enemy's automatic weapons, if any, the gunners distribute fire over their assigned zones or sectors. The machine gunner in the assault position engages within 300 meters of the target, often at point blank ranges. 10 16. If the platoon's organic weapons fail to cover the area or zone of action, 
The company commander can assign more machine guns and personnel. This might help the platoon accomplish its assigned mission. Each machine gunner is assigned a zone or a sector to cover, and they move with the maneuver element. Controlled occupation and withdrawal of the support by fire position. 10-17 Controlled occupation of the support by fire position is one of the key elements in setting up a support by fire position. To remain undetected, use stealth and control. Rangers follow these steps. 1. The weasel moves to and establishes a release point just short of the support by fire position. Order of movement for the weapon squad during movement to their position is the weasel, gun team 2, which is the gunner, ammo bearer, and assistant gunner, and gun team 1, AG, gunner, ammo bearer. 2. The weasel then moves forward from the release point with the gun 2 gunner. The gunner gets into position and remains in bipod mode to provide security. 3. The weasel then brings forward the gun 1 gunner and AG. The AG moves to the left of the gun and places the tripod. The gunner then places the gun on the tripod. The ammo bearer drops off all ammunition at the gun position and then moves to pull flank or rear security. 4. Once gun 1 is in place, the weasel brings the gun 2 AG and AB forward. The AG sets in the tripod, then the gunner sets in gun 2 on the tripod. The ammo bearer drops off all remaining ammunition, then pulls flank or rear security. Once the support by fire is in place, the weasel gets down behind both guns to ensure they cover their sectors of fire and that everything is in accordance to the PL's guidance. The weasel calls the PL and notifies that the support by fire position is occupied. 10-18 The PL can use controlled withdrawal on the support by fire position method to cover the withdrawal of the platoon and provide security for the support by fire position. Rangers follow these steps. Before the platoon moves off an objective, the weasel shifts the machine gun sectors of fire to cover the objective. After the guns cover the objective, the weasel starts breaking down the gun positions one at a time. After the main body of the platoon starts to move off the objective, the gun teams move one at a time into the order of movement, with the last gun breaking down as soon as the platoon is completely off the objective. The entire weapon squad moves tactically to link up with the rest of the platoon. Defense 10-19 The platoon's defense centers on its machine guns. The PL positions the rifle squad to protect the machine guns against the assault of a dismounted enemy formation. 10-20. The machine gun provides the necessary range and volume of fire to cover the squad front in the defense. However, position is very important. The requirements and employment of positioning machine guns are The main requirement of a suitable machine gun position in the defense is its effectiveness in accomplishing specific missions. The position should be accessible and afford cover and concealment. Machine guns are positioned to protect the front flanks and rear of occupied portions of the defensive position and to be mutually supporting. Attacking troops usually seek easily traveled ground that provides cover from fire. For each machine gun, the leader chooses three positions, primary, alternate, and supplementary. This ensures they cover the sector and have protection of their flanks. The leader positions each machine gun to cover the entire sector or to overlap sectors with the other machine guns. The engagement range may extend from over 1,000 meters, where the enemy begins their assault, to point-blank range. Machine gun targets include enemy automatic weapons and command and control elements. 10-21 Machine gun fire is distributed in width and depth in a defensive position. Machine guns are the backbone or framework of the defense because the leader can use them to subject the enemy to increasingly devastating fire from the initial phase of its attack and neutralize any partial enemy successes the enemy might attain by delivering intense fires in support of counterattacks. It also helps the unit hold ground due to its tremendous firepower. Medium machine guns, 10-22. In the defense, the medium machine gun provides sustained direct fires that cover the most likely or most dangerous enemy dismounted avenues of approach. It also protects friendly units against the enemy's dismounted close assault. The PL positions the machine guns to concentrate fires in locations to inflict the most damage to the enemy. They are also placed where they can take advantage of grazing, enfilading fires, standoff or maximum engagement range, and best observation of the target area. 10-23 Machine guns provide overlapping and interlocking fires with adjacent units and cover tactical and protective obstacles with traversing or searching fires. When final protective fires are called for, machine guns, aided by M249 fires, place an effective barrier or fixed direct fire across from the platoon front. Leaders position machine guns to concentrate fires when they want to kill the enemy, fire across the platoon front, cover obstacles by direct fire, tie in with adjacent units. 10-24 in the defense, the Mark 19 and M2 machine guns may be fired from the vehicle mount or dismounted from the vehicle and mounted on a tripod at a defensive fighting position designed for the weapon system. These guns provide sustained direct fires that cover the most likely enemy mounted avenue approach. 
Their maximum effective range enables them to engage the enemy vehicles and equipment at far greater ranges than the platoon's other direct fire weapons. 10-25 When mounted on the tripod, the M2 and Mark 19 are highly accurate to their maximum effective ranges. Predetermined fires can be planned for likely high payoff targets. The trade-off is that the weapon systems are heavy and slow to move. These guns are less accurate mounted on vehicles than when fired from the tripod mounted system. However, they are more easily maneuvered to alternate firing locations should the need arise. Control of machine guns, 10-26. Leaders use control measures, coordinated instructions, and fire commands to control the engagements of their machine guns. Rehearsals are key in a leader's ability to control machine guns. The noise and confusion of battle may limit the ability of a leader to control the machine guns. Therefore, a leader uses a combination of methods that accomplish the mission. The following are several successful methods for a leader to control fires. Oral. Hand and arm signals. Prearranged signals. Personal contact. Range cards. 10-27. A fire command is given to deliver effective fire on a target quickly and without confusion. It is essential that the commands delivered by the weasel are understood and echoed by the assistant gunner or gun team leader and the gunner. The elements of a fire command are Alert Let's the gun crew know that they are about to engage a target. Direction Let's the gun team know where to engage. Description Let's the gun team know what they are going to engage. Range If not already set on predestined target, the gun team can adjust the traverse and elevation mechanism. Method of fire Element includes manipulation and rate of fire. Manipulation dictates the class of fire with respect to the weapon. It is announced as fixed, traverse, search, or traverse and search. Rate controls the volume of fire, sustained, rapid, or cyclic. Command to open fire. Initiates the firing of the weapon system. Ammunition planning, 10-28. Leaders carefully plan for the rates of fire to be employed by machine guns as they relate to the mission and the amount of ammunition available. The weasel fully understands the mission, the amount of available ammunition and the application of machine gun fire needed to support all key events of the mission fully. Careful planning helps ensure the guns do not run out of ammunition. 10-29 A mounted platoon might have access to enough machine gun ammunition to support the guns throughout any operation. A dismounted platoon with limited resupply capabilities has to plan for only the basic load to be available. In either case, leaders take into account key events the guns support during the mission. They plan for the rate of machine gun fire needed to support the key events and the amount of ammunition needed for the scheduled rates of fire. 10-23 The leader estimates how much ammunition is needed to support all the machine guns and adjusts the amount used for each event to ensure enough ammunition remains for all phases of the operation. Examples of planning rates of fire and ammunition requirements for a platoon's machine guns and the attack are listed below. Weapon Squad Tactics, Techniques, and Procedures A. Use a starter belt when moving, about 50-70 to 70 rounds. B. Ensure ammunition and NVDs are in packs such as assault pack for mounted and city operations, rucksack for long sustainment missions, and are readily accessible. C. Carry the traverse and elevation, the t &E, mechanism, and tripod together. D. Mission dependent on when the tripod is taken, such as urban operations. E. Use optics, lasers, NVDs. For example, in urban operations, think about using a reflexive sight because most of the engagements are 150 meters or less. Also, zero the iron sights. End chapter 10. All right, that's it for this chapter. Chapter 10, Machine Gun Employment. It was a short one, but sweet one. Lots of good stuff in there. Uh, it is imperative that as leaders and at Ranger School that you understand how to employ your machine guns because uh, they really do make or break your assaults on an objective. So with that, next time we'll move into chapter 11, which is Urban Operations. As always, if you get a chance, check out armyflashcards.com. Check out our free resources. Uh, maybe check out our different card decks we got on there. And until next time, take care. <laughs>